What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Rocket League coaching video. I'm really excited about this one because we're going to talk about challenging your opponents. It's hands down one of the most important parts of the game and also one of the most difficult to coach. It is extremely situational and there are always a ton of variables that decide whether you should go back to defense or whether you should challenge someone. So we're going to do our best to tackle some of those common situations today. We're going to look at some clips from a Champ 2 game and compare them to some clips from my games. Hopefully by the end you'll have a better idea at how you should be challenging at a higher level to to stop your opponents from shooting and give your team a lot more opportunities on offense. The last thing I want to mention is that I'm a completely free coach. I don't charge at all and all you have to do to sign up for coaching is join my discord and read the rules. If you really want to support me to keep this coaching free and you enjoy the YouTube videos, leave a like and subscribe. It's by far the best way to support what I'm doing and I really hope you're able to learn something. I wonder how often this happens in Champ 2. Like, it should be that once this ball gets past your teammate, ideally, I don't think this guy should keep chasing it. I think this guy should be the one to go. No, it happens behind. pretty frequently. Yeah. So it's this is a well, always just keep on going with it. It's kinda of annoying. Well, then I, I actually will probably in the next one wanna highlight this as even when your teammates are doing the wrong thing, which is chasing this ball into the corner, kinda of totally rotating near post, this is a good thing that you're doing, which is seeing that your teammates not getting off of it then the best thing you can do is just adapt to them and come far post which is exactly what you did so again first man back should challenge i would flame your teammate for chasing this down when you have a much better touch on it it's just good adaptability good decision not to go all right i i would just challenge this earlier once they hit it away from themselves that's where you should be challenging how do I challenge it? Because I might end up just hitting it into the wall or something. So do I have to like turn around and then challenge or what? Okay. Or just hit it into the corner? I will do my best to answer your question because challenging is one of the hardest things to understand in Rocket League, which is when to challenge, yeah. where to hit it, and what to do. Most of it is going to boil down to game sense, but a couple rules of thumb. One is you want to stop the momentum from blue half to orange half that should be priority one is how do i stop the ball from going this way and how do i send it back that way priority two is hit it somewhere where the defense can't touch it you want to hit it somewhere where the defense can't touch it because then you're just buying time for this guy to get back so first and foremost your goal is to stop the fast break which means stop the momentum going on to my half hit it around the defense so they don't get a follow-up touch the last thing I wanted to tell you is the best time to challenge is usually after the opponents make their first touch on the ball. They have to make one touch to gain control, and then after that you have to kind of shadow and wait for the shot. If you're able to challenge after they take this first touch, which like, in this case it could have been after the bounce off the wall too, but you don't want this guy getting a second touch, you know? Okay. Players always set themselves up this is a big reason why grand champs shit on champs it's because they know how to get like one two touches one touch for control and then another touch to change direction mm -hmm. it's much harder to read uh and it forces you to play back so this is a little hesitant on your on your end and literally here i would just hit it to the side and roll it up the wall because mm -hmm. i think you can beat them yeah. to this when you're in a 2v1 if they get time to set up a shot, you're going to get demo chased. They're going to be able to place a shot. They only have one person to worry about. Too many options to cover. So okay. sometimes you'll see like your teammate gets completely demoed or they're flying up to the ceiling or whatever. You want to wait for that first touch? Challenge right after. Watch it back again. I really do think you can get to this ball first and roll it up the wall just to buy time. Right here, I think you're first to that. Instead, you let them take a shot. good playing it into your corner okay i don't know so here i i don't think your contribution is done you have full boost you can follow that like you're oh, on the wall yep you're almost okay. over correcting to go to the far post you know you're you're letting your teammate challenge and look it works out so i don't want to tell you going to the far post is wrong because it works out here but i think you would have more control if when you roll it up to the corner here seeing okay i can still follow that because let's watch um let's watch this guy let's see what he's looking at you know see he can't score from there and picture this you know like you roll it up the wall here he hits that and let's just imagine now that this whole time 
you're continuing on this path, you're underneath the ball here. You know, he his option is to hit it right here, which your teammate is watching out for anyways. Like, you can just clear this already. I think that's a better fast break option. You picked the second best option. So I'm not telling you you did something extremely wrong. I'm just telling you there's a better option here, which is to no, I agree. follow this. That'd be a, definitely better. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is um, a good example too. See how he gets the first touch for control right there and then yeah. gets his follow up? Like that's what that first of all just illustrates why you want to challenge after that first touch because if someone's there to stop him after the touch for control, that's really good. But then like once he gets that control, now it forces you to wait and see what he's gonna do. That's why in general challenging after they get their first touch is really good. And then the second mm -hmm. thing is look for moments when they hit it too far from themselves. Like right here, that's too far from him. You should as early as you feel comfortable stop this ball because he's using a ton of boost to recover for that and look you're just like you're not getting in his face you're not forcing out a shot at all you're the first on defense and i think what's happening is we talked about your teammate chasing the ball a little bit he's probably doing that because you're shy to go for it if you had shown that you're going for this um your teammate chasey regardless like He's not going to challenge this or be here if he sees you going up for the ball. He's probably going to see that you're challenging this and hopefully go to net. But at least let the goal be your teammate's fault, right? What you're doing does affect where your teammates rotate. And a, a bigger part of the problem is that throughout the course of this replay, you've kind of boxed your teammate into his chasing play style where like it's kind of a vicious cycle you think oh he's gonna chase it so i'll play more passive and just wait in net and he's thinking oh he's waiting in net so i gotta chase it right like it, it can be a vicious cycle like that that you need to set the tone a lot earlier where you're not afraid to challenge the ball i'm gonna do the same thing i did for the last replay i did where i'm gonna show you from my perspective anyways we're not gonna focus on the decision making the rotation just how and when i decide to challenge the ball okay I don't need to hit the ball here for this to be a bad touch, right? I just need to show presence because let's take a look at Kern's perspective. He's trying to get it around me because he sees I'm right there. I'm in his face. I'm going to touch it if he doesn't do something. It forces yeah. him to do something and then my teammate recovers. Easy peasy, bing, bang, boom, shot on goal. Again, here, this is a challenge. I know I have zero boost. I didn't get the landing I wanted. This guy's probably going to hit it first. All I'm doing is getting in the way of something that's going to fly in my net. Force him to yeah. make a bad touch so that my teammate can follow, and then I can get, you know, a follow-up touch based on what my teammate does. Yeah. You see that? Like, I'm playing for control here. I think I have the boost, and, like, I'm literally highlighting what the, the other guy did against me. I have the boost. I'm trying to play for the control, take a much more dangerous shot. And this guy's saying, no, I'm not going to let you do that. He still loses the 50, but mm -hmm. he's pushing me to not give me that comfort of saying, oh, great, your teammates demoed. I got full boost. I'm purposefully waiting because I want control mm -hmm. of the ball and he's not letting it happen. Yeah. It makes my life so much more difficult where I just have to 50 this and try to follow it up. And his teammate gets a follow up touch. That's how you challenge in Rocket League. You don't let people set something up. See, again, like, yeah, it's on their half. Yeah, they have control, but I'm here to make sure that they're not going to keep that control. I'm not hesitant and shying away to go back yeah. on defense. It's staying here, making their life difficult. Again, he makes the first touch, I challenge, and look, I get the bump. I don't have to hit the ball to have an impact. Right here, 50 comes out, I'm going to challenge because it's the same thing as, like, now, I know for a fact, because it was a 50-50, blue team is going to have to take the time to regain control, so I'm in there. Find one more good example. Here should be good. First touch, immediately. My teammate's on their backboard. They're in that 2v1. I'm not turning back on defense. I know that if I turn back on defense, I'm in a 2v1, and my teammate can't help me, and... The only other option, if I was going like back this way now, is that my teammate's going to struggle to catch back up on the play, and they've got the 2v1 where they're going to go for the bump. So that's why it's like, especially after this touch from my teammate comes out, 
while they're making this first touch for control, that's when I'm in there challenging. Okay, so hopefully by now you have a slightly better idea of how and when to challenge in Rocket League. It's important to note that this is such a situational part of the game that no level of advice is going to apply 100% of the time, but I hope what you just watched really helps you find that line of when to pull back and when to just go for it. If you enjoyed this coaching session, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and thanks for watching.